guys, we're live from Butler, New Jersey. Uh, welcome to episode five of Roll with the Fox. So guys, I'm a little bit torn. You know, we tried to alternate gi and no gi. So right now, the weather in New Jersey is starting to get cold, which makes me want to do more gi. But also, for some reason, this is, you know, the no gi season to some extent, whether it's, uh, you know, with ADCC and no gi world and no gi Pan Ams tend to be in the fall. So we chose to do no gi. Guys, one thing you should understand, my gi and no gi games are very similar. I get pretty much almost the same submissions between gi and no gi. The only exception might be sort of the guillotine where I, uh, with the gi, I tend to switch from a guillotine more into anaconda. But generally speaking, I use universal grip. So if I have a choice, even in the gi, if I have a choice grabbing the sleeve versus the wrist, I will usually grip the wrist. So my grips, uh, uh, same thing for, for the foot, I tend to grip the Achilles heel rather than the pant legs. So I try to make my games very similar and I do like both gi as well as no gi. Um, I tend to prefer a little bit the no gi because it's a way faster game, less friction and you have to think very fast. But I also love gi, especially in the winter time. Gi tends to keep you a little warmer. Um, so guys, let's dive right in. If you see me kind of crawling to the camera, you're gonna realize that I, I have kind of questions. So, uh, Thank you for all the questions, guys. Uh, one thing that we may not go all through all of them because there's just too many. So first one we're gonna address is from Greg Broadwell. Uh, he had a question, what happens if, if your opponent strips sort of the, the, your uh, uh, Ashigarami? So there's a lot of different options. You know, it depends what the guy does with the foot. So when you strip somebody's Ashigarami, it's, you don't want to just strip it and throw it away because obviously if you just strip it and, and throw the foot away, his, uh, his, um, he can control sort of your, so if Enrique just throws my, my foot away, there's no reason for me not to sort of start going into X guard. So a lot of times when somebody strips Ashigarami, they actually control the foot, all right? This is better for Enrique, worse for me, all right? One of the options from here is to just go into waiter sweep, all right? Now, I can either sweep Enrique or enter a knee bar. Now, uh, one of the follow-up questions there is, how? what is my favorite leg lock? A knee bar is that one. So we will segue into that, but let's look at it again. Um, so, you know, as I go into Hashigurami, Enrique strips. So what I'm going to do is try to keep my shin above his knee, all right, and start to threaten the sweep. Now, if Enrique starts to turn away and tries to run, what I'll try to do is probably switch into a knee bar. Guys, if when you go for a knee bar, um, when you trap his other foot, it actually makes it more difficult for him to t to escape. Well, if he can get his foot out, it's going to be easier. Now, with the knee bar, uh, it depends which way he turns. If he turns to my right, I will stay as I am. If he turns to my left, I will generally try to get an under armpit grip. It's very, very tight. So let's look at that one more time. So I, he strips. I'm swim, sweep. Sometimes I use my left leg to push him away to make sure I have it stretched out, and I'm switching into a knee bar. So, um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, again, guys, uh, you know, when the guy strips Ashigarami, there's just a ton of options. This is my favorite one, uh, but there is way, way, way more responses. You got reverse X, you got straight X, and, and I'd encourage you to to look at experts like John has a uh, DVD, or not DVD, you can download or you can get in DVD format, leg lock system. So I'd encourage you, if you really wanna explore all the possible options, we just don't have time to do that. I tend to go over things that are, that I'm partial to that are part of my core game. Um, this kind of brings us to uh, the next question, and that is, what is your favorite, uh, uh, favorite leg, leg, leg lock. It comes from Bilal from Canada. Um, maybe a few other guys asked the same thing. My favorite leg lock is, is a knee bar. And the reason for that is 
When you have an E-bar, you by almost by definition, you're controlling the whole leg. So if the guy uh, first responds to an E-bar if he's deep enough, is to turn, is to twist. When you turn or twist, you have access to the follow-up to the additional leg lock submissions being, whether it's heel hook, whether it's straight ankle lock, whether it's a uh, 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 toe hold. So again, when you hit a knee bar deep and the guy turns before you have a chance to, to shut it down, uh, to, to get the submission, if he defends properly, you will have a chance for a second leg lock attack. So again, that's why uh, I think that's one of the reasons why knee bar is, is my favorite. Also, with the knee bar, typically uh, when you arch, it's a straight arch. Whereas with with uh, heel hooks, toe holds, you not uh, or not so much toe holds, but uh, heel hooks especially, um, you not just arching, but you also twisting. So it's not that great for my back. So I prefer knee bars, which is just a straight arch. I will hit a heel hook, but that's not necessarily something that I aim for you know, 20 out of 20 submissions. So let's look at some of my favorite knee bar uh, setups. One of, the, one of the ones that I tend to use is off a failed arm lock. So when I go for an arm lock and he pulls out, what I'll do is I will sw swing my knee wide, uh, my left leg wide. I'm trying to get to the far cheek, but preferably I actually wanna get all the way under the other foot, and now I have a very, very strong ah. bar. Let's do one more time. So I try to go for an arm lock. Fails, and now I have very strong knee bar. Ah. Okay, so that's one of them. We just went over a possible knee bar from uh, waiter sweep. Uh, by the way, the knee bar from an X guard. If you can stretch your opponent, it's very similar to the waiter sweep knee bar. Um, another one is when I'm passing guard. I, I like knee cut pass because it's fast. So I can't get through. I will back step and I will, I will tend to fall wherever my opponent is, is leaning. It's usually, it's harder for me to control. If I can, I will actually lock down the other leg, but sometimes I can't. All right. So Again, a back step from a guard pass. I'm trying to pass, back step, and I'll go to my left. Sometimes Enrique forces me to my, uh, if, sometimes I go to my right, sometimes he forces me to my left. And again, I have a very strong knee bar. Another one that I like to do, and I did, I, guys, you can't bait your opponent for this. So don't give up the guard pass, just, just to get into the knee bar. When I use it is when you have a good, strong guard passer, guy that has a lot of wind, he's shoving your legs from side to side, or he's switching sides very, very quickly. Uh, if you're on the bottom, chances are just from a pure gravity standpoint, you will get tired before the other guy. So, uh, and if the guy on top is in greater physical shape, has better endurance, um, you will, you, you will get even more tired. So I will try to keep my guard as long as I can, looking for an opening, looking for sort of an overextension. All right, so I will not just say, just, just do this. I'm not a fan of this approach, so in my guard. I'm not a fan of this. So again, so Enrique is trying to pass my guard. I will fight, I will try to regain, attack, attack. And at some point he gets through my guard. So as he's coming through, I'm already pivoting underneath him and coming out the back into a very strong knee bar. So this is one of my favorite. Again, guys, if you really wanna have a, the best shot at finishing this, don't just bait it, make it real, fight for the, uh, you know, attack from your guard, guard retention, guard retention, guard retention, and then when he does get through, usually by then the guy, you know, when you make your, your opponent overextend, that's your best chance of, of finishing a submission. So let's look at it one more time. So I'm fighting for, for, for guard, and it just doesn't happen. He goes knee on the belly, I'm already inverting. Now, with this, I would like to get in my under. 
okay guys? So those are some of my favorite knee bar setups. I personally prefer knee bar to any other leg lock. And if I have a choice, I will go for knee bar first and then the other submission second. Okay, what do we got? Curtis Blanchett says thumbs up. Jason Bever says hello. Elad Sapir says hi Fox, great videos. And Alexander Weber of Germany says great rash guard too, prison one. <laughs> <laughs> hi guys. Guys, I don't have any more of these. Uh, if you're larger than I am, I'm happy to stretch this one out for you and, and pass it on to somebody that's larger Excel eventually. Um, I, I do have a new design of, of rash guards coming where we teamed up with halfsumo.com. Um, I'm hoping that the first batch uh, will be ready before I make my 10-day uh, seven seminar tour of Germany, which is starting on October 18th, okay? So uh, this one I do not have anymore, but we hopefully I will have a couple others. Guys, don't inundate me with, with orders because I only have so much room in my luggage for for my stuff, for my geese, no geese, and clothes and a couple of rash guards, a couple of t-shirts. But hopefully if this thing with uh, halfsumo.com pans out, uh, they have global distribution, so we should be able to get our stuff pretty much shipped to anywhere in the world. Um, is there any questions on the stuff we go, we've gone over so far? How to get out of back mount by Alpur Eskandar. Okay, so... Alipur, sorry. <laughs> How to get out of back mount. Uh, what I would, will, uh, we have too much stuff already to cover uh, in this episode. If you want to see sort of some um, back mount escapes, go to YouTube, put in Carl, spelled K-A-R-E-L, and Firas, as in Firas Zahabi, and it's going to be one of the videos that pops up. So it's back, uh, back escapes with Carl and Firas. You can put Silver Fox, BJJ, and the video with Firas and, and Carl will come up. Then literally, I think that's about a 30 minute YouTube video that focuses on back escapes. Okay. So let's move on to, to the next topic, guys. Guys, this is supposed to be interactive, so don't hesitate to, escape, to uh, uh, ask questions. Um, so guys, I'm, you know, as you can see, this is my questions for episode five. I had to put some additional questions on episode six. So, um, I need sometimes as they come in, I try to organize them in a logical sequence. Um, so the next one is uh, front headlock, big guys hunker down from James Smith. I, I covered that on a, in a seminar in, in um, North Carolina in Charlotte this past weekend. But I think it's something that probably more people could benefit from. And hopefully I will not forget. We we're going to do also Adam Vistead from Sweden. Uh, is asking for Dar's finish and Anaconda setup. So I think this sort of front headlock where the guy turtles up, Anaconda setup, and Dar's finish. Um, J.M. Smith and Adam Vistead from Sweden. Um, hopefully this answers your question. So we're going to try to cover those three topics that are to some extent fairly closely related. All right? So let's go into this, guys. So uh, a lot of times when the guy turtles up, um, especially a strong guy. And I, I'm actually a fan of, of, uh, of attacking from the turtle. So a lot of times if I have somebody's guard that's hard to pass, like a, you know, guys that's got good legs, swimming, constantly recovering, what I'll try to do is instead of trying to pass the guard, I turtle him up. Let, let's just briefly, like I'll just show you how, you know, what I'm talking about. So a lot of times, so, you know, Enrique is swimming. So at some point, I'll take the risk on the on the pass. And you can see that I didn't pass, but look what happened. I got him turtled up. So as soon as he's coming out, before he gets a chance to hunker down, I'm going to get my grips and sprawl my right leg. I have a ten I tend to attack better with my left arm as the choking arm. So I, it's up to you. You can do the same thing with your right arm if, if that's, that's sort of your game. So I will sprawl the leg. So now we wind up in this position. I have just a basic guillotine grip underneath him. But any guy worth his salt, especially anybody that's trained with me, knows that you don't want to let me have a guillotine grip. You're not, a lot of guys don't drive. So if, if Enrique drives and I can switch into a guillotine grip, it's done. But most of my guys, a lot of guys in Henzo's, they, they don't drive anymore. They just, they just kind of sit there for a while 
and trying to keep my grip from being useful. So when that happens, guys, it's very important to have a good grip, okay? So if the guy just hunkers down, I will threaten Peruvian necktie. I'm not a big fan of Peruvian necktie, and the reason for that is um, there's, first of all, um, uh, you know, the way people react to it. If you don't get the proper angle, you, you might lose it, and not just lose it, but now the guy, if his head pops out, he's on top of cross side, uh, either top of cross side or top of your guard, and again, uh, in a, in a, especially in an MMA uh, fight, that's, that's disastrous. So I'm not saying that I'll never, never attack with a Peruvian necktie, I will. But what I'm trying to do, I try to steer them into Anaconda. So we're gonna look at two breakdowns into Anaconda. One is a Peruvian necktie, which again, I'm not a huge fan. I, my success rate of, of submission with a Peruvian necktie, I would say is probably 50-50, which in my book is ina inadequate. When I attack a submission, I want to have a high success rate, something a, a north of 70, 80%. Okay, uh, and when I say success rate, I mean I either get the submission or the guy gives me even a more favorable position. Okay, so I will count if the guy rolls and I'm top of cross side with a very strong follow-up choke or follow-up arm lock, I consider that a, a, still a part of the success. All right, so with curly and necktie, so I have my hands connected. Uh, there's two, th uh, another things I don't like about curly and necktie, look where my head is. I prefer to keep my head on the, on, on, on the far side from the camera because if I'm here and you have a really strong guy, as I'm popping up, and he, you go head first into the mat. So I'm not a fan of that. I try to avoid that as much as possible. So as I have this grip, so I try to look away. But for Peruvian necktie, I need to drive up. I'm going to pop up. And guys, this is the, the biggest folly you could do is you line up with him, which will make almost for sure his head pop up. Okay. So I want to make sure I go, not quite perpendicular, but at a, at a pretty uh, at a pretty big angle. So as I'm popping up, I have a Peruvian ne necktie in the making. Usually a high level guy will try, if I stop him, that's, this is great. I may get the submission, I get the submission. But a high level guy starts to roll. Now pay attention, as he's rolling, my right leg starts to steer him to the proper side where I now quickly finish him with anaconda so let's look at it from another angle okay so again off the guard pass uh, he turtled up I got my grips before he had a chance to do something with it I'm gonna drive up pop up and I want to go almost perpendicular angle if I can finish right here this is great but a lot of times he will fall as he, I use my right leg to steer him, compress the top arm, and switch into a very strong anaconda. Okay? So that's one way to break down the guy from turtle where you have somebody pretty strong. The second way is, let's do it this way so they can see how I isolate this off. So, from this angle, what I'll try to do is when I... Um, Turtle the guy up. I, I, I keep the same grip, guys. The grip is the same. I don't like to re-grip because usually when you re-grip, there's a possibility of you losing the submission or, or the position, you know, or, or, or both. So, as Enrique, you know, is, is holding on tight, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to compress. Um, guys, by the way, I've played around a lot with the grips. I believe this is a better grip than this one. In the past, I used this grip. It's easier to, to fold this arm in with palm to palm. The problem is the finish is not as strong. So I will start out with a guillotine grip, just basic guillotine grip, and try to fold this arm underneath. So as I start to drive, the key is I want to make sure his, his elbow comes off the floor because it's hard for me to push it in. But when I just get his elbow just slightly off the floor, I'm going to start to isolate it with my leg. Sometimes you don't quite get it, first one and go. No. Make sure you set it up properly. So as I'm doing this, one, two. Now I have it deep. You will feel a lot of slack in your choking arm. In my case, this is the left arm. When I get that slack taken out, 
this is the time for me to go. Now, by the way, I'm going for an arm and guillotine. The finish here is slightly different from the no arm in. So instead of me being on my side next to him, because he's controlling his left karate, I have to use my body. So I try to line up with him. This is the only time I will line up with, with him, okay? Bec and the reason for that is I use my torso and my hips to drive Enrique's left arm into his own karate. I just got the worry we only have 10 minutes left, so I better speed this up. So um, as I'm driving in, guys, what I want to do is take out the slack. And normally, I want to be on my side. I want to make sure I control his head. In this case, because I, uh, he controls one of the carotids himself. Sometimes you get an arm in where you control both carotids with my own hand. In that case, the finish would be the same as no arm and guillotine. Okay? So there are times when I, I have an arm in, but I, I'm controlling both carotids. So I will make the same finish with him being next to me, okay? Being right next to me, and I finish because I have I control his karate with my left thumb and my wrist. But off the turtle, usually he will try to block the choke, and therefore you don't control the karate properly. And that's why we have to change the position sometimes on an arm and guillotine. So, so as I'm setting this up, sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes even three. Take out the slack. As I'm going down to finish, now this is no, a position for an, uh, no arm guillotine. But because I have the arm, I'm going to push his left arm into the choke. Now, sometimes what happens is... Whether it's arm in or no arm in guillotine, the guy just flops. And again, we have the opportunity for anaconda. Um, guys, one of the biggest mistakes for people when they get the anaconda choke, and same thing with rear naked choke, people try to do this, rip the guy's head off. Okay? It, with the anaconda, with rear naked choke, what we're trying to do is instead of do this, is literally try to anchor your hands and try to bring your elbows together. That's what causes the constriction. That's what you want. You want to make sure there's a tight constriction. Okay? So let's look at the anaconda one more time. This time I'm going to set it up from a, from a guillotine, normal guillotine, where the guy defends by driving his hips up and flopping to the side. So Enrique attacks. I hit him with a, with a no-arm guillotine. What he tries to do is tries to block my hips from, from coming up. I can take it away with the arm, but he's also giving me the anaconda, okay? So I have the grip, okay? Now notice I'm driving off my hip. So when I take my hip away, his arm falls a little bit. That's what I'm looking for. As his arm sort of stretch, stretches out, I switch my grip from his neck to over. Now, I will actually try to bring my leg over. And this time, again, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to pull. I'm trying to constrict and curl. Okay? Now, with arm and guillotine, this is even easier. Let's take on this side. So, as I'm doing this, he flops. The switch is very simple. Okay? So, guys, this is some of my favorite anaconda setups. Um, again, uh, nogi, I usually hit, hit, hit the guy with the guillotine into anaconda uh, second. With the gi, I will still attempt uh, the guillotine, but because of the friction and sometimes you can't get your hand deep enough, I will threaten the guillotine, but that threat is weaker, but the anaconda entry is the same, finish is exactly the same, and usually what I'll do is, is with nogi, I will finish probably more guillotines relative to anacondas with the gui, it's probably more anacondas relative to guillotines. All right, so guys, let's look at the Dars finish. If you look at YouTube, there's a lot of guys where you, so, you know, so sometimes you pass in the guy's guard again, and he's, he's attempting for an underhook. So what I'll do is, as, as I'm coming through, I want to start to lean to his hips to make sure that I get my right hand deep. 
all right? If I need to, you could pull on the guy's head. Make sure your, your, your ear goes to the hip, so I wanna get this deep. As soon as I have it deep, I will connect. Now, this is the mistake people make. And I encourage you to experiment with uh, yourself. Now, do you think this, the finish is stronger when I sprawl? So where's my weight right now? Most of my weight is in my, is in my stomach. So my weight is going down here where on his, possibly on his elbow, possibly on his hand. Where do I want most of my weight? I want most of my weight on his shoulder because I want to make sure I compress the choke in. Okay? So as I have this, so what I'll do is a lot of times if the guy keeps his arm on my back, what I'll do is I'll sprawl to take it away, and then I'm going to come in. So again, when I come in, guys, I use my chest to compress his shoulder. I don't want to sprawl because when you sprawl, you put most of your weight here. If I'm putting most of my weight here, how is that going to help me choke him? I want to make sure that most of my weight is here to compress his shoulder into the finish. Now, if I'm fairly square, it's primarily a choke. If I start to turn to his head, twist towards his head, it starts to cause a crank. My personal preference, I don't want to cause you pain. I want you to give up, I want you to tap. But if, if uh, so generally speaking, I will attack more square, but the more uh, sort of to the head, you will have, this becomes more of a crank. So again, let's look at it from this angle. So as I'm coming through, I take his arm off my body and then I bring my body close. Now, I'm gonna use my chest to compress down on the choke. And again, guys, what are we doing with our elbows? We're trying to have our elbows touch each other, okay? This is a very, very strong choke, guys. If you can make a good connection, uh, I wanna make sure I get a good connection. What I mean by that is I want my wrist or at the very least my hand in my elbow, okay? So once you can make a good, good connection, you will get a very strong submission. But again, this is what we're doing. So as I'm swimming in, if I need to, I pull the guy's head up, I will get a connection, make sure his hand is not on me, make sure I strip, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my body on top of it and try to meet my elbows together. This is how you get a strong Darce choke, okay? One more time. So I'm coming through, I get a connection, get rid of his arm, and now bring my chest into the choke. Okay guys, is there any questions? Because I think we're just about running out of time. We have two questions. Yes. Uh, Bilal Sapir wants to see triangle escapes and Bilal body uh, side control escapes. Um, okay, side control escapes I'm gonna try to put on episode six. Um, Body tri uh, triangle escapes, I think we went over in one of the episodes. Guys, just so you know, uh, we keep all the episodes on Facebook, so even after the live um, live uh, feed or whatever you want to call it, uh, you can still look it up on my wall. Uh, and also, we're transferring them over time. I think there's uh, three episodes so far on YouTube. Okay, so you, if you need to refer, and we try to tag the items that we go over. I believe, didn't we go over triangle escapes? Was it episode three or four? So episode three or four, guys, you have some triangle escapes. Um, all right, so you can have those resources as well. All right? Uh, Adam Wistet says, great stuff, Fox. Going to hunt for this while rolling today. Nice, let me know how you make out. How are we doing on time? One minute. One minute, all right, so guys, again, uh, the benefit of the live feed is this you have a chance to ask live questions and it should be interactive. Um, you know, as you're asking additional questions, you could see the list is getting bigger and bigger. So I'm trying to kind of keep a logical sequence. Uh, if it's a big area, I can't open it a minute left because then we're not gonna get through it. So I'm, I'm gonna leave some of the bigger, uh, bigger topics for, uh, for the next episode. The benefit of watching it live is you get a chance to ask questions as we're doing this. So if you can ask questions, especially on the topic that I'm covering, if some of the things, some of the answers that, that I'm giving, 
are not clear, I'm happy to go over them again to make sure that they're clear now. If you sort of want to refresh yourself, it's either on my personal wall on Facebook or it's going to be on YouTube. So right now we've uploaded three out of the four episodes. So probably by the end of this month, we're going to have all five episodes uploaded on, on, on YouTube. All right. So guys, I'll catch you for episode six next time. When is that going to be? November 1st. November 1st, guys. All right. See you November 1st.